What's poppin', man? It's T.O. Double, man. This is the sixth episode of the M. Crate Podcast, you dig? And I'm led to call this episode uh, The Nature of Flesh Versus the Nature of the Spirit. So, what is the flesh? In the Bible, the flesh is the nature of mankind minus God's Holy Spirit. So, it basically is the nature of man um, that consists of uh, hearing, seeing, uh, touch, smell, taste, All the natural senses, um, that is the flesh. A person who's living in the flesh only lives by those sensory functions. Uh, They don't live by faith, which means they don't live by anything other than what they can experience naturally. And that's why um, when you're in the flesh, you can't perceive the things of the spirit of God. Because in order to perceive God, it's going to require you to uh, have a sense that is higher than the smell, the touch, the taste, the uh, seeing, and the hearing. God is in a realm that is above the flesh called the realm of the spirit. And the only way that you can sense what's going on in that realm is what we call faith. So when people um, are trying to experience God, but leaving out faith, it's very difficult for them to even grasp the concept of God because God is not in the physical realm. You can't see him, touch him, taste him, feel him, or uh, 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 hear him without faith. Now, check this out. You could do all those things if you include faith in your system. But minus that, you won't be able to experience God because God is a spirit. Now, when I say God is a spirit, that means that he lives outside of this 3d dimension he's not a fleshly being god is above flesh he's above the natural realm that's why we call god supernatural god exists above um the natural realm he's actually in the realm that governs all natural things uh like i said before in a previous episode this natural world is sitting on top of a spiritual world so everything that you see in this natural world um it first happened somewhere else. So, for instance, when you see Jesus come down and give his life, the Bible teaches that that event happened even before the foundation of the world. Why? Because all things happen first in the realm of the spirit before they manifest naturally. So um, that's why we got to figure out how do we get in contact with God? You know, we were born with flesh. We were born um, with hearing, seeing, touch, smell, taste. And in the flesh, this is how you are um, trained to uh, receive your information and your data. But now God is, is coming, knocking at the door saying, you're going to have to use your faith in order to get in contact with me. So what's the key? What's the key here to to using our faith? First, we got to understand what faith is. Faith, the Bible teaches, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things you can't see. So what faith is, it's basically um, that belief in something and that conviction and that assurance of the reality of something, even though you can't see it, touch it, taste it, hear it, smell it. So it's, it's just like a conviction. It's kind of like, um, for instance, if you go to, let's say you go to a job interview and the boss likes you and he says, I like you. I'm going to, I'm going to hire you. I'm going to uh, have you start this Monday and I'll pay you at the end of the week on Friday. So notice he told you something, but notice how you don't have the check in your hand or the money. You know, you haven't even put on the uniform yet. You walk outside and you're jumping up and down and you're going, mom, I got the job. I got the job. And you're excited. Why are you so excited? Because of faith. Notice you don't have the money in your hand yet, but you have the substance of those things that you're hoping for, which were those words or that promise he told you saying, I'm going to hire you because in your mind, you you can see the end of it before it happens. You can see you working that nine to five and getting that check at the end of the week. So instead of waiting to rejoice when you get that check, you're rejoicing right now with your mother because you've received those words from that boss man by faith. 
That is the exact same thing God is asking you to use, but toward him. God has told you many things through the Bible, but the way that you're going to be able to receive them in your spirit is by faith. The same faith that you use when you're excited because you got a new job and you know you're going to be getting paid a a, a $100,000 salary. You rejoicing. You haven't seen anything yet. You haven't seen a check. You haven't seen a dime. But you, you have the assurance of things you're hoping for. And it's making you rejoice. This is what God is asking from every single human being. Have faith in me. This is the reason why the word of God is so important because the word of God says um, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So let me say that again. Faith comes by what you hear. So in other words, everything, most of the things you believe come in through your ear gate. You know, when you hear something, you know, your faith, if it cleaves to it, Or if your belief, if it cleaves to what you hear, it turns into faith because now you're expecting something. So God is saying faith comes by hearing and hearing by my word. So the way that you increase your faith in God and your awareness of the spirit, even your awareness of the spiritual world is to hear God's words. Right now, you listen to this podcast. It's not just you listening to a podcast. If you're If you're putting belief with what I'm saying, your faith is being activated and it's causing you to experience God. Even now, if you're believing the words that I say in this podcast, you're having an encounter with God because it's not me that's really speaking. He's only using me as a vessel or as a tool to convey something that he wants to give to you. But the only way you would be able to know that is by faith, because notice God is a spirit, but he uses people to reach other people, just like the devil. The devil is a spirit. And if he wants to affect you, he he he's usually going to use another person. You know, we're going to we're not going to allow him to use a a person in Jesus name. But for the sake of this example, just so you can get the understanding of how spirits operate. No spirit can affect one square inch of this earth without a human um, body. I'm going to say it like this. The devil cannot affect one square inch of this earth without a human. So that's why before a human does something evil, something that the devil wants them to do, he first has to persuade them, convince them, give suggestions in order that they will fulfill his will and his desire. That's why you hear all this rap music on the radio talking about, you know, I'm a shooter nigga, I'm a killer nigga. You got these females doing stripper rap and, and promoting that. Why? Because the spirits that are in them are trying to persuade you who never stripped, who never shot a gun. They need permission from you to activate that manner of lifestyle so that those results, which are, you know, death and, and calamity and, and failure, so that that stuff can come into your life. But did you know if you were to shut that out, they that, those spirits that are in them would not be able to affect you. But because of the weakness of the flesh, uh, many people have fallen victim to the atmosphere that's in the or the spirit that's in the atmosphere. You know, this world currently, the Bible teaches, is um, dominated um, by negative influences because the Bible says the devil is the god of this world. But Jesus came and was exalted over Satan. So now anybody who comes to Christ gets free from that bondage and free from that uh, flesh uh, to where they don't, they're not slaves to that atmosphere anymore because they're, they've been set free by the sacrifice of Jesus' body. Since he gave his body, he gave his flesh. He, when you receive it by faith, you, you break the power of, and the dominion of the devil off of you because Jesus was crucified for you. He crucified that nature that was that was keeping you from God in his own body. So now when you get saved, that nature of the flesh um, is subdued and you're filled with his Holy Spirit and that Holy Spirit um, comes in by faith and that gives you the power to live a life that is pleasing to God. So let's go back to the root of what we were talking about. We were talking about the nature of the flesh versus the nature of the spirit. So when you're walking in the flesh, 
um, you know, you go, you're going to want to do the things of the world because the world is dominated by their senses. You know, the world um, is not walking by faith. The world is, is going to try to, you know, tell you information based off what they can see, hear, taste, touch, feel, smell. But God is, is coming in with faith and he's saying, if you want to be saved, because you can only be saved by faith, you're going to have to believe the gospel and you're going to have to have faith in it which means you're going to have to receive it in your spirit. So what I'm about to tell you is something that you're going to have to receive by faith. Your great, great, great granddaddy or your forefather, Adam, Adam and Eve, they disobeyed God. And in doing so, they brought all humanity under a curse. Now, this curse is where humanity's nature is to sin against God. Now, the problem with that is that sin equals judgment. But God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. So in other words, Jesus came down and paid the price for everything you ever did wrong and ever will do wrong. He suffered on the cross for you in your place. When you see the cross, that should have been you. But God, instead of chastising you, chastised his son and even put him to death. But the good news is that after three days, Jesus resurrected from the dead with the keys of hell and death in his hand. And now he holds all authority in heaven and earth to free whoever puts their faith in him. So use your faith and connect your faith with what I'm saying to you right now. God loves you. He sent his son and all you got to do is believe. Believe that he accomplished this for you. And what God is going to do is... He's going to give you a new spirit, a new heart. He's going to take out the stony heart that's against God and place in you a heart of flesh. And what I mean by flesh is not the flesh that we've been talking about, but in the sense that your heart will be soft toward God. So if you believe in this message that I'm preaching to you about Christ and his resurrection and his love for you, I want you to say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner, but you said, if I believe God raised you from the dead, I would be saved. Lord Jesus, you can't lie. So based on what you said, I confess I am saved. Holy Spirit, come into my life, teach me how to live, and thank you for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And right there, you have received your salvation by faith. Don't wait for no fireworks to go off. Don't wait for, you know, three dogs to sing the Star Spangled Banner to confirm that you received your salvation. It doesn't work like that. It works just the way a woman conceives um, a seed. When a woman has sex and she receives a sperm, she, she doesn't know that she's about to have a baby, but she has conceived. Even so, you have conceived salvation because you have received by faith the word of God in your spirit. And the, the Bible calls his word, the word of God, a seed. So now you keep that seed and you keep your you keep your faith, you know, and you water that seed by studying the word of God, by hanging around other believers, by getting more information about this Jesus and this salvation and what happened to you when you prayed this prayer. And God is going to grow you up um, and amaze everybody that knew you. They're going to see the miracle of God in your life and they're going to want to get saved as well. So continue to stay with God. Keep your faith. Stay in that word. Hey, until next time, this is M. Cray. Peace out.